Hey everybody, Miranda Patron here. Gonna do another tutorial with you um, using one of my lovely little stones that I found in Maine this summer. Look at that. So smooth. So these are from the coast of the Atlantic Ocean, of course. And I think I am going to work on a little swipe mandala this time. And of course in the fall colors because that's what I'm stuck on lately. <laughs> so I hope you will stick around and check it out. Okay, I think I'm going to go forego the background on this one because it's just so beautiful and smooth. I just want to paint right on it. And I came kind of excited to start it out. So go ahead and measure and find your centers on your stones. This one looks like it's probably about three and a half inches. And so I'm just going to find my center and, or shoot for my center, <laughs> and we'll get started. I'm using the Deco Art paints and my brush here. And I'm just starting off with the cool white right in the center. And that looks about it. And I'm just going to kind of go on through and not talk too, too much for this one. You'll get to see how it goes. So no, ordinarily you do your plus sign and we do eight. I think I'm just going to do five because that will allow me to do a little more swipes. So five will put you at the angles here instead of doing the plus sign. So you can still do a top bottom or the nine, like the above, I can't talk tonight. So a top down or side to side, depending on the aspect you're viewing. And then on the angles, so you end up only with six dots around the center instead, like that. Okay, now I'm going to go with some Venetian gold. And just dot in between the white ones that we just put down. Next is the Rich Espresso Metallic. And this is the same size 10 zero brush. I'm just loading it with more paint to get the larger dots where you push down a little bit harder. There. Maybe this is a little bit of a better camera angle. So we did the cool white, the Venetian gold, and then the rich espresso. Okay, I think the next one out. I'm going to use the chocolate multi-surface metallic. It's just a little bit darker.
I think the next one I will use the copper. And then we'll start in with our fall palette. Okay, so copper. Super overloaded on the brush. We'll go some white starting our dots, but only do halfway around. And again, this is the same brush, it's just small amount of loading on the end, so I'm just using the tip and small amount of pressure. I think I'm actually going to do two, two rows of white. The white in between here too will kind of help break it up before we hop into the fall palette, the fall colors too. That way you go from, you know, your darker metallics and then copper lightens it up a little bit, but then the white gives it a kind of, not really dainty, but just a, a nice brighter contrast. Sometimes if you can do a lot of dots with the white that are small, it, starts to look like lace really pretty so there's some neat effects that you can get this is just a light mocha so it's just a shade or two darker than white so it's kind of an antique white almost just the lightest ever tint of brown in it.
next color I have is going to be Daffodil Yellow. Okay, now peaches and cream. Okay, and I have coral blush after the peaches and cream. I think it's so neat how you can start to see kind of like a sunrise, you know, it gets from light to dark or sunset. But the ombre progression too of colors is pretty neat. color I have is a bright coral so it's almost orange it was a little bit darker
And as you start to lose paint off your brush or tool, the dots will get smaller, but you also push down harder at the beginning and then lighten up as you go. And that'll give you the dot procession progression <laughs> from large to small. So it's about one in the morning here, but I'm so excited to work on this stone today and the day got away from me, but I really, really wanted to work on it. So much that I'm sacrificing some sleep. <laughs> hey, both all the moms out there know what I'm talking about probably. If you are sleep deprived, you're probably a mom. Or an art enthusiast. <laughs> Look at that. It's coming along pretty nicely. So we're just going to give it one more pop of color now with a, um, I think this one is True Red. And that's from the Decor Americana line. Oh, that's so rich. It's nice. Definitely, definitely have a nice fall palette. Just love the autumn colors too. They're just amazing. Originally, I grew up in New England, born and raised, but I can appreciate living in Ohio too because they have mostly four seasons here. I'm pretty sure there's online memes talking about how it's basically only summer and winter, but... They have maple syrup, they have maple trees, so they have leaves that change. So nice, the crisp air and sweaters and hikes. Sitting on the porch in a rocking chair. They're just all really, really reminiscent activities for me that I really enjoy and find calming to do. I'm going to get that certain smell in the air too, like the crisp cold that you can tell is coming, but it's not quite winter. And the leaves crinkle as you walk through the woods. Nice little pop. Okay, so I'm just debating whether or not to bring the metallics into some of our swipes because I'm going to start doing long swipes now. Or if I want to just start back with the yellow, the light mocha maybe, the light mocha, and do our fall palette again but using the swipes. I think I'm going to go with the, the light mocha. Okay, so I get a good amount on my brush, and I'm going to start at the top where I finished dots of red, and then I'm just going to gently bring it around. And slowly tuck it in to that copper dot. So as I've said before, I know swipes swooshes, um, there's so many different names. It's a comma stroke if you're doing them little short ones. Um, it sounds fast, but if you do it slowly and just keep your steady hand and calmly go around the area that you want to use, And then you'll just kind of push down hard at the beginning and then gently lift up at the end and it will create the swipe.
That's the beauty of having a smooth stone too, is doing something like the swipe. It's difficult when you have jagged, bumpy stones or porous or you get caught on something, so it makes it a little easier and kind of relieving when you have such a smooth surface to work on. Okay, so now the next thing to determine is do you want the swooshes to all be the same? So they go in line with everything? Or do we want to start back a little bit to just try to kind of keep the same length as you go around? So if I were to draw a circle, it would be a circle and they wouldn't be jutting out over each other. It just depends on where you want your design to go. I think I'm just going to hedge back just a little here with my yellow. Oh, and I just realized something. It's okay, it looks okay. This is Luscious Lemon. I grabbed the wrong color. I used Daffodil Yellow, which is a little bit darker on the dots. But this is Luscious Lemon. Not a big deal, but just in the interest of full disclosure here. <laughs> so you know the exact colors I'm using. This is still a deco art paint, but I believe it has been discontinued. So you can just stick with the daffodil and that would keep your, your fall palette still. I apologize for that little mistake, but this is actually one of my favorite colors, so I always have it out on my workplace here. <laughs> I just happened to grab it by accident. I guess you gravitate still towards what you enjoy, huh? Alright, so space-wise, one, two, and maybe a dot, with maybe three. So we want to make sure they can fit at least an orange and a red in there. So I'm gonna go with, which one do I like the best? I think I'm gonna go with the Coral Blush, which is the second coral color that we used. After the Peaches and Cream, it was Coral Blush. So I'm gonna go with that one, just because I don't think I can cram in all the colors that I used in the dots. And we don't wanna crowd it, so. Back to the coral blush for the next swipes. And again, just hedge it back a little bit more here. And these ones are going to be a little bit shorter because you, the, the way the design goes is you're kind of having less space as we fill it in with the swipes. <clears throat> I apologize, my voice is getting sleepy. <laughs> here we go. One more here. And I'm glad that I went to this one because see, I even have less room here. I must have been a little bit off in my spacing, which is okay. Just makes it more unique. <laughs> it's definitely going to be different than any other one I've done. Coming along nicely. 
And I think we'll just be able to fit our red in there. I'm using the true red again. And that one's going to be even shorter than the one before it, just because, like I said, to keep the spacing, you're running out of space, just tuck it in there. And this would be more like the true comma strokes that I've seen, not as elongated. Ooh, got a glob on there. Good thing I noticed before I put it down. Okay, so I'm waiting for that to dry. I have some spaces down in here where I think I'm going to tuck a couple more red down in. And you just want to make sure before you do it that you're going to have the space to put them everywhere you want to along there, which I might not have. Let's see. <clears throat> Pardon me. Yep. Right here, not too crowded. So, I might forego that. Because I don't want to crowd, crowd them in there. But with your spacings, just so you can see what I'm talking about, I was going to put the, some red dots on either side of the Venetian gold here and just kind of at, pull the red down into our center. But I think over here I put these ones a little too close together so I wouldn't exactly get it on either side. I might be able to. Mm. I'm still debating that. <laughs> but that's one thing you'll want to check for your symmetry is to make sure you can fit the design that you want to add in every space around your stone. Okay. I think I am going to go for it, actually, now that I'm thinking more about it. I'll just make the dots even smaller than I in had initially thought I was going to. So just on either side of the Venetian here. And then I think what I want to do also is bring the metallics out to the edge. And then that'll kind of join, join the piece up a little bit more. Yep, I'm glad I added those in. It's amazing how much some little details can make, too. So I'm going to go for the dark chocolate, I think. Or the dark, yeah, dark chocolate. Well, just chocolate, not dark chocolate. And I'm going to put three little dots out here at the end of every mocha and that kind of helps make it more cohesive all together combined combining the colors because you're drawing out the ones that we use in the center. I think we'll do the same with the Venetian gold at the end of the yellow swipe. Do the three dots as well.
All right, thank you for joining me this late night, and I hope you enjoyed this fall palette mandala. Feel free to check out my other videos here, and I wish you a lovely evening and happy painting.